homens e mulheres têm comportamentos diferentes. Por quê? Uma criança aprende rápido a falar uma língua complicada, mas tem que estudar para aprender matemática. O que no comportamento humano é resultado da evolução da nossa espécie? São temas para a psicologia evolucionária, uma nova ciência que descende da teoria da evolução de Charles Darwin, relembrada em todo o mundo neste mês de fevereiro por ocasião do bicentenário de seu nascimento. Um dos mais famosos psicólogos dessa área, com muitos livros publicados no Brasil, é Steven Pinker, professor da Universidade Harvard. Pinker se destacou recentemente por ser um dos primeiros cientistas a ter seu genoma publicado na internet. Segundo o psicólogo, descobrir quais são os seus próprios genes foi uma experiência frustrante, porque não acrescentou quase nada ao que ele já sabia sobre si mesmo. Muito mais esclarecedor, ele diz, para entender a natureza humana, é seguir os passos de Darwin, e explicar as nossas tendências inatas como resultado da evolução. Steven Pinker recebeu o milênio em sua sala em Harvard para conversar sobre a relevância de Darwin para a psicologia contemporânea. So let's talk about Darwin. First. Yes. So uh, the teaching of evolution. Uh, I've read in one of your books, and I think it's it's right that uh, people really don't understand exactly what evolution, the theory of evolution, is about. So. Uh, how can you explain to a lay public who is going to be, be watching this what the theory of evolution tells us about what uh, we need to know about us and, and, and the world? Well, the theory of evolution uh, explains how complex living things come into existence. The classic case is the uh, eye of animals, which is far too complex to have been uh, assembled by chance or just to grow like a, you know, a wart or a, a tumor. Uh, it's got many parts that function together uh, to do something, that is, to form an image. Now, our nature is also complex. Our ability to remember, our ability to see, that is, to use the information coming from the eyes, our ability to speak, our ability to uh, cooperate with one another and I think the theory of evolution is necessary to allow us to understand how the complicated parts of our brain evolved in the same way that it allows us to understand how the complicated parts of our body like our eyes evolved but most people not most but lots of people especially religious people um, and people in general they, they, they see how how perfect uh, uh, life is I mean in many instances the complication that you mentioned how it works and uh, and uh, it seems to be designed mm -hmm. so how can you convince someone who has this ingrained i think we have this ingrained yes. oh belief. absolutely we see design we think there must be a designer and the crucial contribution of darwin why his theory has sometimes been called the best idea that anyone ever had is that it explains the appearance of design without a designer and how do you convince someone that, well, first you have to explain how the theory works. It begins with a replicator, that is some uh, piece of matter that has an ability to make a copy of itself. Once you have that, well, you have copies that make copies that make copies that make copies. They will eventually overtake the Earth unless there, there is competition for the materials to make the copies and the energy to power the uh, replication. Now, we all know that no copying process is perfect. You copy something, you make a copy and a copy and a copy, there'll be errors. Some of the errors will make it harder for the system to make copies. Some will make it easier by chance. The ones that make it easier will naturally, just if you do the mathematics, outreproduce the others. When that happens, over and over again, the whole population will look as if it had been designed for replication, but in fact, you're just seeing an accumulation of copying errors that did lead to successful replication. So that's the explanation in a, in a nutshell, as we say. Uh, and one can see it in computer simulations. It often it, it goes against our intuitions that a brute, dumb, mechanical process like natural selection could give rise to complexity. But a number of computational biologists have invented artificial worlds in which they allow things to replicate and the replicants replicate and replicate in turn. And you get 
for example, artificial organisms that swim and fly and walk. You get eyes developing from just layers of tissue. And to see these simulations is, I think, to believe that the process of selection can lead to design without a designer. But besides selection, there's adaptation. What is that? Well, adaptation is uh, traits in a system that allow it to attain some goal. The theory of natural selection says that whenever we see adaptation in a living system, its ultimate goal will be reproduction. In fact, not just in living things, but anywhere, because anywhere in the universe. It predicts that you should never find a complex organism without uh, an ability to reproduce. It predicts you should not go to the moon and find uh, hotel rooms and computers and cars and other complicated systems, because there's unless they were left there by living organisms, because only something that reproduces can give rise to adaptation. That's the content of the theory. Uh, how? Give us an example of how that uh, is shown in in our lives. Well, if you compare the things that a human can do that our best artificial systems cannot do, there are many examples. You can't get a, a robot that can walk like a person or grasp things without crushing them or dropping them. I would love to have a robot that could put the dishes away from the dishwasher or run simple errands. I'd say, oh, we're, I'm out of milk. Can you go to the store and pick up a glass of milk? A, a robot can't do that. It can't understand English. It can't, uh, it can't manipulate things like take money out of a wallet. It can't climb up or down stairs. Uh, it can't use common sense. So if I say uh, that, that I need some milk, it won't come back with uh, a thousand gallons of milk or with <laughs> one centimeter of milk. All of these things that we take for granted as part of our own intelligence are extremely complicated engineering tasks and that suggests as with the eyeball that there has been some shaping by evolution so it means that we have all these innate abilities right uh, we are not uh, born as uh, blank slates uh, completely that valuable is, that's we are right. born with specific abilities how do they those abilities have developed oh well they evolved by uh, allowing